We're not the starters. We're not even the backups. This, 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 this is the Third Stringers Podcast. Welcome back to the first str- Third Stringers Podcast. We're not the first stringers. <laughs> We're not even the backups. <laughs> Shout out to the old podcast. Uh, oh, we got a lot to talk about. Um, we got the NBA championship preview. We got the Celtics downfall. We got a hot Twitter fingers from Jeff Van Gundy himself. And we got a ladder challenge building today. Let's roll into it. First things first. First things first. First things first. First things first is we have to welcome Justin back uh, from his uh, from his one week hiatus. Hello. Justin, how you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm feeling great. It's the weekend for me. I don't work tomorrow. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, it's the bachelor party this weekend. Justin's Let's coming go. down. Uh, we got everyone coming down to Cleveland. Um, Paige isn't here this week. Uh, she had to wrap up a couple things, uh, but we'll get right into it. Uh, first, we got to talk about the NBA championship preview. Games start tonight. Uh, we got the Nuggets and the Heat. Nuggets come in as an eight and a half point favorite tonight. That feels about right, I would yeah. think. You know, it, you know, if the Heat would have you know came out and dominated the entire series against the Celtics, I think this is way closer. But I think a lot of people think this is going to be a gentleman sweep um, by the Nuggets. I am one of those people. <laughs> it's uh <laughs> I think the Nuggets are just a better team here and I think the Cinderella story the Heat's just going to end in the finals. I agree. I think they'll put up more of a fight than everyone's expecting cuz they've been doing it all the whole the whole playoff uh picture. Um but yeah, I think I've said it since day 1 the Nuggets are the most complete team in the league right now. It's going to be tough for the defensive strategy to shine for the Heat, which is what they've been relying on and I, I don't think they'll be able to stop Jamal Murray and Jokic, plus all of their supporting cast that is more reliable than the Heat supporting cast. So I think that's all, what it comes down to. I think it'll probably be Nuggets in five or six. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, I think some of the games will be close for sure. Um, I just think the Nuggets close out very well. I think the Heat do too, but I don't think they're going to be able to stop Jokic and Murray. Um, it's going to take a lot to stop Jokic, and especially when he's distributing the ball like he has been this entire playoff picture. It's it's going to be really hard to stop them. Um, they also have the elevation advantage, which I don't know how much that really affects the game. Inside, it, you know, Denver outside for the Broncos, there is definitely an advantage. There's no question about that. But in a pressurized building, I don't know. I, I just feel like it, it it's not the same. It's not, but also they're undefeated at home in the playoff series or in the playoffs. I yeah, you're right. You're not wrong. You're not this wrong. Is, they, this <laughs> is why teams need to try in the regular season. This is the exact reason. Oh yeah, if they don't have the yeah, if they don't have the top spot in the West, you know, they're three or four, maybe this is a different story. But they they took care of business during the regular season. Um I think this is the first season that we're finally seeing Jamal Murray back to his old self and, you know, bubble Murray is coming back in the playoffs. This is going to be playoff Murray now rather than just bubble Murray. Yes. I think that he shines brightest when, you know, the spotlight's on him. I think he can handle it. And I think he'll prove that in the championship again this year. I agree. And also having a teammate like Jokic who, from all of the media I've seen of him, doesn't seem like he has that big of an ego, and he just wants to win. So that has to help a lot to have Murray kind of be that ball dominant guard. And then if Jokic does have it, he's looking to pass first, anyways. So that must be a very nice teammate to have. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, it's it's interesting because so if you look at the previous champions, um, they get a lot of showtime on you know, NBA TV, ESPN. Do you think the Nuggets will get that next year if they win this? Because they're not like a top market, but the Bucks really weren't either, and now they're getting a lot of time too. Yeah. No, I think the the league is, I mean, with LeBron potentially retiring, KD's kind of on his last leg, they're ha- they have to pivot to these newer stars. Giannis, obviously, 
was the first one that they kind of elevated Luca a little bit to some extent. And then they were hoping for Ja and Zion. That kind of fell through. <laughs> now they're going to – Jokic is here, so might as well push for him as well. So I think that he'll their team will get more shine. Hopefully he does too. I know he kind of got some bad media for the uh, whole MVP race thing, but double two-time MVP, potentially finals MVP with the championship under your belt, you got to respect that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Paige would say differently, um, just because she's a little uh, she's a little hurt about the Suns. But you know, it's fine. It's fine. It is what it is. <laughs> um, now let's talk about the Heat, though. They're up three zero, right? They should have just taken care of business in Game Four. They let it go too far. They, I mean, they they had clutch ball at the end. They they played great in that Game Seven, and I think it speaks more to the Heat than it does against the Celtics. Um, I think they, I think Eric Spolstra got them ready. And I think Jimmy Butler, you know, had, he needed to get his revenge on the Celtics for last year. And I mean, Caleb Martin out of nowhere, just absolutely balling. And this is what the heat culture does is they somehow get these players that, I mean, let's just be honest, would be at least backups, if not third stringers, I guess, uh, <laughs> on any other team. But Spolstra just finds ways to bring them together, and it works. And that speaks to Jimmy Butler as well, just being able to play with these guys, being able to bring out what he needs to. Um, but, I mean, it's it's amazing what they've done this year. Yeah, I agree. I think the Heat, and especially Eric Spolstra because of his weird career he's had, are like the epitome of just keep going at it and the hard work hard work will pay off at some point. Like Jimmy Butler's been a f- top 25 player I think ever since he's came in the league. And he's gotten to this point by just being that that underdog mentality. Um I I personally think this says more about the Celtics and how they kind of fell apart than the Heat doing their thing. I th- and we're, I know we, we're kind of getting into that, so we might as well do it now. I'll do it. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are two great st- talent stars. They can't work together. I don't no. think they've ever been able to. I think they've just kind of relied on their talent the whole time. Um, I don't know why they still have Al Horford on the team. I guess I could say that about Udonis Haslam for the Heat, but ha- Horford actually gets more minutes than him. <laughs> um, there's just so many questionable things that the Celtics have done the past five years. When they had so many draft picks, they had these two drafted stars that proved, proved themselves pretty early. And then it's like, I know they went for Kyrie. That didn't really work out. And they tried to make some moves, but I don't know. I think they really blew the past couple of years. I think they at least should have had a championship by now. I know they got there, but I, I don't know. I, I'm... Now, I'm not a huge Celtics fan to begin with, but I'm disappointed in this team. And I think it's best if they dismantle and try to retool. I don't know if they will. I, I, it wouldn't put put it past them for them to keep the two stars and then just try to get different role players around them. It's going to be an interesting offseason because Jalen Brown is up. It can sign a new contract. He's eligible for one. It's going to be interesting to see what they offer him. If they offer him the Supermax, they're fully committing. They'll commit with Jason Tatum too, and they will build around the two stars. And that will be their team. That will be their identity for the next half decade, at least. But it's going to be interesting to see if they do it because I don't know if they can justify paying two players $600 million over the next five years. Yeah, that's crazy. And yeah, (laughs) Um, over a half a billion dollars on two players just to continue to fail in the playoffs. Yeah. It's it's not that it's not they're not great players because they are. They're fantastic players. It's just they don't work out well together. I heard someone say that they're addition rather than multiplication. Oh, that nice. X factor being able to play with each other. You can like Jimmy Butler with anyone he plays with. He's an X factor and that's because he can he has the ability to pull things out of players that they didn't even know they had. Yeah. 
that should be what's happening with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. They are just amazing players that have <laughs> luckily been on the same team together. Yeah. But if you look, they don't play with each other whatsoever. They play ISO ball. Both of them do. Like that's their way to play. And mind you, that works for some players, just not on the same team. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They need they need a distributor. Mal- Malcolm Brogdon is a good distributor. But when you have two guys who want to play ISO ball, it's not going to work. And it kind of brings me back to almost like the Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant days. But Russell Westbrook was a little better at distributing the ball. Yeah. I, so I don't know, it, but it has that same feel to it. And Kevin Durant realized it wasn't going to work. So, yeah. I mean, here's, here's the thing, right? If you go to the Trailblazers, this is – I've thought about this for a while now. I've brought it up before. If you go to the Trailblazers, you say, I'll give you Jalen Brown and a first-round pick. You give me Damian Lillard. I don't know which side says no, and I don't know why they would say no. Because the Trailblazers would have a star as long as he's okay with going there. They have their star that they can build around. They still have the third round pick this year where they can get Brandon Miller or Scoot. Because mm-hmm. obviously Wemby Yama is going to the Spurs and can't really do anything about it. Yeah, but you put Damian Lillard in a spot where he can win immediately and he can distribute the ball better. He's a clutch player. It's a great trade. It's a great trade idea. Yeah, I like that trade. I, I think it would help the Celtics more immediately. Because I think Damian Lillard, he's an elite level player, but he knows yeah. what it takes to win, which is weird to say because he hasn't been to a finals. Um, but I think he would match better with Jason Tatum. I think if Jalen Brown goes to the to the Trailblazers, they kind of have to like restart, which sucks for them because they've been in the same fringe play in spot the past four years. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see why they wouldn't want that. He's very similar in style to Damian Lillard. They they kind of can fit into this. He can kind of fit into their already existing offense. And yeah, I would take that deal if they know that Damian Lillard wants to leave and that Jalen Brown would buy in. If he's there and he just had to be there, he wouldn't. I wouldn't take it. Yeah, yeah, because that's the problem, right? I think if the best way that this would work out is if the Celtics, quote unquote, extend him. And then trade him basically like a sign and trade. Yeah. So that he gets his max money that he wants. The Trailblazers would still have money for Amphrey Simons and would have Scoot or Brandon Miller. Yeah. Like that's the that's where they can build. Um, I don't know if Nurkic is uh st- I know he's still he was on the team last year, but I don't know if he's up for free agency this year. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. Um not a bad player, just not the best center. Yeah. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's not terrible, um, though. I don't mind him. Yeah. Drew Eubanks played well at the end of the season. Um, like, they don't have a bad team. It's just, it's not like a contending team in the West. Yeah. This m- could possibly change that depending on how good Scoot or Brandon Miller are. Yeah. But if I'm the Trailblazers, too, I'm thinking we keep Damian Lillard. We draft one of those guys. We sign Anthony Simmons. And I, I, I would say that's a better team than having Jalen Brown join the team. That's fair. I mean, but, it, but the long term benefit. Correct. Right. Right. And yeah, I mean, I can't argue with that after the Jalen Brown eight turnovers in Game Seven. That was tough. Just awful gameplay. But working working on his left hand in the off season. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely not bouncing it off his leg. Yeah, that was bad. How many times? <laughs> how many times have we seen that exact play? <laughs> um. So yeah, looking at the Celtics team now. It's it's going to be a patience versus pressure type of situation, and I don't know. It's it's going to be how it's going to be how that relationship that Jalen Brown has with the Celtics organization. I think that's immediately where it starts. If you if he's okay with it, you know, like he's water under the bridge over the whole Kevin Durant trade idea. Um, I think he I think he stays long term. And they're fine with building around those two and just making it work. 
but I don't know if that's the best idea. Yeah. I forgot about that Kevin Durant trade idea beginning of the season. That was that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been an interesting pairing with Tatum. Yeah. I don't know that would have worked out. <laughs> no, it wouldn't have. It, it, it would be the same place the Suns were in, except they don't have – I mean, if Chris Paul was, wasn't was injured, I think it could have been a little bit different. But They could have made it a series, for sure. Yeah. You would have Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, or you'd have Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant, and – I argue Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant would be worse. So I'm happy that I, that didn't go through. Um, and I don't think the Celtics fans, from what I've heard and from what Draymond has been saying on his podcast about the Celtics fans, I don't think they have the patience in them. Like they see two young stars on their team. They see that they can get some sort of playoff success. If I'm a Celtics fan, I'm like, why aren't we getting it done? Fire everybody. Get rid of the coach. Get rid of... Uh, Jalen Brown start over like I'd be pissed off so I don't think they'll wait I think it'll it'll be if they don't get to the finals next season with the current team if they keep everyone it's a bust see I yeah I kind of agree they oh. they just have they've just had an embarrassment of riches for so long they're one of the most winningest franchises them and the Lakers and that's why there's no patience with either organization yeah. and I, I get it they set a precedent out. Right, right. And, I mean, it, it, it goes across multiple sports as well. Like, the Yankees have a different mentality. The Dodgers have a different mentality. Um, like, they're not okay with just making the playoffs. They need to win. Yeah. That's true. Uh, I'm okay with making yeah. the playoffs for the Pistons. I'd be cool with that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> hey, Monty Williams signing. We could, uh, you know, they, they, they have, have a reliable coach now. <laughs> I guess. I like Dwayne Casey. He just kind of didn't do much. The the league was passing him by. It was time for him to go. It kind of similar idea with Brad Stevens. That's why he moved to the front office. Yeah. And that's why Dwayne Casey is now in the front office as well. That makes sense. Um, but hey, I, I like the signing. I love the signing actually. When the first report saying that Monty Williams declined it, which may be true. Maybe that he just wanted more money. <laughs> <laughs> and he got it. He got all the money that Detroit has. So he better he better grow some of these young talents and get there. But that's a conversation for a different day. <laughs> he, he's done it before. He should be able to do it again. <laughs> yeah, he did it with Chris Paul. <laughs> like we don't. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. We have Brogdon Bogdanovich. So that's <laughs> that's our leader. I don't know what's going to happen, but we can try. Sure, we have Corey, Bring back Derek Corey Rose. Joseph. <laughs> Bring back Derrick Rose. Have him be the Chris Paul, and we'll see where it goes. <laughs> yes, I'm down with that. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's move on to Twitter fingers. All right, let me play it real quick. Twitter fingers. Jeff Van Gundy. Okay. <laughs> Jeff Van Gundy. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. Not afraid to call out refs for blowing the whistle after the basket was missed. Not afraid to basically call out Zion and Jai on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> the guy just seems to have lost his filter. But honestly, I don't hate what he said here. So he was talking about how the NBA – needs to be fixed um, just because the game just feels slower and people are less interested. So he said this, he goes, eliminate free throws until the last four minutes. If you get fouled on a shooting foul, you just get the points. You don't go to the line and you don't go to the line for technical free throws. They're just points. Then I would eliminate halftime. Halftime is the biggest waste of time, or I'd reduce it to five minutes. So you can go to the bathroom and come back out. So, I don't hate this, right? It it would speed up the game. It just feels unnecessary. And I just think they need to they need to go back to calling less, allowing more. It it feels different. Like they go to the line so much and it's because now they're just calling so much more. Like you you can't do anything now. And when you're down low, it's either a foul or a charge and there's like, there's no in-between anymore. It's not just good contact. I don't know. It feels different. I agree. I, yeah. 
it feels different, and I don't know if you should just award points because then it kind of it discourages the contact. Like I just go for the layup. I'll try and get a tip. I guess I don't know. It kind of takes away the whole aspect of defense. Then if you're just going to give them the points if you follow them, yeah, they need to call less, but also at the same time, they already get. It's just such a weird game. It's the evolution that happened over the past. 15, 20 years with the three-point line and then the no hands. It kind of made it into a whole different game. And I don't know how they fix it. I don't think... I don't I don't think if you call a foul, that you just, a shooting foul, you just get the points. Helps that. I, I, I think it kind of just reinforces the don't play defense. Yeah, it's... it That would be... You're right. You're... You're absolutely right. There would be less fouls. They would just let them go to the basket because they don't want to get in foul trouble at all. Yeah. So instead of playing defense, they're just going to allow them to go to the basket rather than, oh, I might be able to get a tip on this, but at least they'll have to go to the free throw, free throw line and make the free throws. Um, yeah, it, I understand what Jeff Van Gundy is saying. It's slowing the game down, and fans are getting a little irritated with it, but not everything has to be faster. Like yep. baseball went that route and it really worked, but only because the games were going four hours. Yeah. Like sure. basketball games are two and a half, two and a half to three hours. It's, it's not on the same level as baseball. Yeah. So I just think they're comparing everything to how baseball made the changes and it worked, which it did, but not everything has to change. What does need to change is the fact that every single time you drive to the basket, it's reviewed. <laughs> it's reviewed and everyone complains every single player and they the referees kind of allow it to happen yeah like they they don't say anything to them they don't say i understand you can't give them technical fouls for whining but it it's just not the same anymore yeah like if they if if you were back in the 80s and every single time they went up for like a layup like that and they complained to the refs it, it, it wouldn't happen back then but then the rest would just, just target you and call more fouls on you if right, you were complaining. Right. <laughs> it just feels different. And I don't, you, there's not really a fix to this, especially not an easy one. No, I think uh, I think from what he said, Jeff Van Gundy, I do think they should shorten the halftime. I like that idea. Mm-hmm. I don't think they should immediately give the points if it's a shooting foul or technical. I think they should go to the line and shoot one. So if you if you shoot a three, you get fouled, sh- do a free throw for one point, and then you get possession. I think that would discourage the defense of just letting up and kind of giving them a shot because they still have to shoot and make the free throw. But then it also doesn't take away from the other team because they have the ball then. So I think that would help. But you're right. It's kind of just a mentality thing of the players can't complain. And you can find them. Like, they're playing in this league. You guys own the league. Do what you want, I guess. Like, if someone complains more than once a game, find them $10,000. Like, do something drastic and maybe you'll see a change. I That would be the biggest thing that I could see is just hit the, hit the pockets. But Draymond, Draymond would lose every single dollar he's earned. Or he would shut up, <laughs> and then he'd be like, "Dang, this is nice." <laughs> I I can't argue with you, man. It, it would probably adjust. He could save it um, for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, that's that is exactly what he'd do too. That and I think saving the dunk contest would be good. Shortening the season would be good. Maybe shortening the first couple rounds of the playoffs to best of three or best of five would be nice. I don't know if you keep the play in games or not. Personally, I don't mind them, but I know a lot of people don't and I kind of don't understand why, but whatever. I get it. There's just kind of unnecessary, but it's also more exciting because it's one and done and, or kind of have to win your way in. So I I don't mind that, but some people don't like it and want to see it gone. I don't know. I think all those things could help. Yeah. They're trying different things and, I respect it. Yeah. And I think the reason why is because there I think the reason why people don't like the playing games is because it's just allowing more teams to get in, more teams to get in. Which Not is really. I, you still got your top eight. 
Yeah, but you really have ten, though. <laughs> <laughs> but not really. You have it's like a uh, March Madness. You have your sixty-four, and then you have a couple of playing games. See who who gets the last spot. Right, right, right. So it's sixty. So it's sixty-eight. Dude. Yeah, but no one says that. <laughs> March Madness starts when they're sixty-four. <laughs> I understand it, but I don't know. When you see out in the West, when there's five teams within a two-game difference, I like it. I, I think that's a good time to have the play-in. So I don't know. I, I I see your point for sure. And then you have teams like the Heat that, you know, were the. I think they were the eight seed. Like, prior. I don't think they were. I think they were... Were they seven? I think they were nine or ten. No, no, no. They lost that first game to the Hawks. Oh, yeah. So they had to... I can't remember if the Hawks were... I think the Hawks were eight. And the Heat were seven. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, But, yeah, like, they had the opportunity to lose that against the Bulls. They had a crazy comeback. And then now they're in the NBA championship. Exactly. <laughs> But like, that's so cool. I, I, I see it both ways for sure. I, I mean, the playing game is not, is not my beef with the NBA. Um, I think they do need to shorten the season. I think we've had this conversation before. Yeah. Um, it would allow teams to heal. It would decrease the amount of uh, load management mm-hmm. um, where you have your stars playing when they need to. Um, I think they're more ready for the NBA playoffs rather than getting injured and stuff like that. Um, but I, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do it because they're gonna lose money and they're definitely not gonna decrease the amount of playoff games anymore. It is seven and it will be seven for the rest of the time. Might go to nine, might go to nine. That would be so, that would be dumb, but I <laughs> guess, yeah, you know, what could be interesting. And I know I was against this in the past. Instead of adding like one or two teams, I had like six I have like ten teams. Make it make the make the league a a lot more, a lot bigger, right? Maybe you have a couple teams in Europe, a couple in China, Mexico, whatever. You'll have more teams playing, right? You could lower the the season count and still retain as much money. You'd have more fan base. You kind of get the global effect, and it would just be you could just restructure it in a way where you have maybe like a southern region, a, a United States, or kind of just go like continent wise, go North America, South America, Europe, Asia, and then they do their own thing, and then they have a world uh, playoff. I guess I don't know. I'm just throwing out ideas. I think that <laughs> if they're going to expand the the the, the uh, league, they need to go all out. They need to bring in like seven or six to ten teams, and then that would help them be able to reduce the season. So. I, I, I see your point for sure. I think that'd be um, I I wouldn't hate it. I do think you'd have to keep it in the United States though. Or like Canada, Mexico, like North America. Why though? Dad, just because if you're going over and playing like a game, it would be such a travel to go to like Europe and then but come back. They would do it in their own respective regions. All right. The current NBA would play, you know, their 50 games or whatever. Then you have the six teams in South America, Mexico play their 50 games or 40 games, whatever, whatever the number is, Asia, Europe. And then after that, they do their playoff. And then the top two or three teams have their playoff. Two, three I gotcha. Of each location. I see what you're saying. I think so. You're okay. I, I definitely see what you're saying now. I mean, it's not a bad idea. It's like, uh, like Little League World Series where yeah. they come together at the end. Yeah, they have the regionals and then the yep. internationals. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't hate it. I I think it's a good idea. I, it, it might work. And another thing, I, man, I'm just all full of ideas. You would have <laughs> these players that are going to other countries anyways to play who may they might not be as good, right? You get Jeremy Lin or DeMar- uh, Boogie going to different teams, different countries. It gives them a chance to still compete for like a bigger like no one's watching Puerto Rico games with Demarcus Cousins, but if he goes there and maybe gets a couple other people to follow him down there and they're in the southern region, then they can you know run it and they'll get to the world finals. I don't. I think it'd be a cool idea. You see a lot of former players kind of get back into it and shine from their sides. 
we'll see uh, Dwight Howard playing for the Taiwan team. Exactly. Making his uh, making his comeback to the league. <laughs> <laughs> Get Shaq out uh, there again for some reason. <laughs> yep. Absolute dominant down low. <laughs> Oh, all right. Uh, get, let's get back on track here. Yes, sorry. I'm all over the place. <laughs> all right. We got our first ladder challenge. I'm sure everybody's seen this by now, um, where you start with, you know, $10, you go to 1000 in 10 days. We're going to do that in a little, uh, little smaller amount, smaller amount of money here. Start. So we're going to start with a dollar, you know, um, but I got... Bets for you for tonight. This is to double your money to get to two dollars, and then next week we'll do two to four, and so on and so on. Perfect. Uh, all right. So tonight I got Caleb Martin making two made threes. He's been killing it. He's going to continue to kill it tonight. There's not going to be any, uh, you know, uh, jet lag. It's been a couple of days. He's riding the high of playing against the Celtics, and he's going to continue it into the NBA championship. Two made threes. Aaron Gordon, plus four rebounds. Easy number. Bam's not a great rebounder. Sorry. Jimmy Butler is, but... Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Um, Aaron Gordon's been dominating down low. I like him over four rebounds. And then Jamal Murray, plus four assists. He's not the main distributor, but he still will kick it out. Um, I see... I don't know who's going to guard him tonight. I don't see him dominating, but I think he's going to know that going into the game. I think there's going to be a little bit of rust, and he'll you know kick it out for to like Caldwell Pope or Michael Porter Jr. He'll get four assists tonight. That doubles your money right there. Love that. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm, it seems easy, I'll right? I'll be personally doing these bets. So love it. If you love lose it. my money, it's on you. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> that is fair. I get it. <laughs> All right, that's all we got for you this week. It's a little bit of a shorter episode. Um, we don't have pages. Uh, we don't have pages. Uh, rants about the Suns right now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, if you like the if you like the content, please uh, like, comment, subscribe. Go follow us on TikTok. Uh, we're going to be posting more on there as well. We'll post this ladder challenge. Um, we'll see where it goes. Love it. All right. All right, we got NBA content, NBA draft content next week, and we'll be talking about the uh, NBA championship as well. Sounds good. Peace. All right, see you next week. See you.